It's A W T I T U D E representing for the lion's voice. Yes, massive. This is the time for I and I, the lion them to tell I and I story, our story. Yes, and we rain and roll like this. Rain and roll, yeah. Sell us say I rain and roll. You can't take the lion vibes, people. If you no fool, cause we know sell us rain and roll. Ah, rain and roll. <coughs> Sell us a rain and roll. Queen Omega chop them in a deep fire pool from them. No Queen Omega, she rain and roll. Uh, royal Kushite, ancient essence. Emperor Celestia, in a majestical presence. Clash of all events. Uh, projecting to Iron Eye events. Uh, we sing a song for the king, we bring joy and blessing and we must stand in the air. We hear it every day. Rain and roll. Attitude to that boondocks, black organization of noble diplomats optimizing expressions to the world. I'm Nana Faraika. The time has come for the lioness to tell her story from her viewpoint and tell the world. Who Queen Omega is. This is the lion's voice. But are they not dominated by men? I asked. So you see the reporter where she had tried to pull off right or something. Oh no! Her Majesty objected. We are not Oriental. Huh? How many women have you seen in the market wearing veils? Are any of us kept shut up in the house behind lattice windows? In the family, both husband and wife hold property and both earn money. It is the man who gives a dowry, not the woman. Do you know men here even wash their own clothes? How about divorce, I ask? And this is the part that I really wanted to focus on. I just read that part because we rarely hear from the Empress. And I know a lot of people, you know, Maybe never know Empress Man was so fiery. Um, so um, I love that. So we're gonna we're gonna talk to Dr. Apong, uh, Dr. Santo about that on the live Wednesday. So make sure you put that in your calendar. Um, equal rights, the Empress answers promptly. All property is divided, and she's talking about divorce. Equal rights, the Empress answers properly, promptly. How about divorce, I ask. Equal rights, the Empress answers promptly. All property is divided into two parts, and the divorced wife receives a full share. Sometimes even a stool is sawed. Our proverbs say, the last millet seed shall be shared. Some women grow rich through multiple divorces. What is the lot of your unmarried women, I inquired. There are no such women in my country, the Empress asserted. They are all married and have homes. The year is 1892, and the land of Ethiopia has been experiencing four years of terrible famine and drought. They call it the Kikuken, or the evil days. At least one third of the human population and 90% of the cattle have died. The hyenas have feasted on so many carcasses that they had become overweight and barely able to move. Just when the people could take no more of the evil days, a woman named Wasiro Yashimebe is giving birth in a place called Ergersa Goro. This is her ninth attempt to bring forth new life. Her previous eight attempts only resulted in death. Will this child live? Thankfully, a healthy baby boy is born. His first cries are drowned by thunder and lightning flashes across the night sky. The heavens open up and torrential rain starts to fall. Ethiopia's drought is over and the baby boy is given the name Tafari, meaning one to be feared or respected. Lich Tafari's father, Ross McCunnan, is a very important man in 1892 Ethiopia. Although he is overjoyed at the birth of his newborn son, he cannot spend much time with him. Ross McCunnan is the governor of Harar and must get back to the famous walled city to deal with its affairs. 
Furthermore, he is the foreign minister of Ethiopia, and having traveled to different places in Europe, he is very aware of the material and military advances they have made and the looming threats they pose to his country. Ras Makana knows that the majority of Ethiopians have no idea what is coming and that he has to work that much harder to secure the realm. Lish Tafari would grow up to become the legendary emperor, Haile Selassie I. To understand his journey, we must first understand the Ethiopia that he was inheriting and what it was like when he was born in 1892. Get your copy of Kwesi Bansu's book, Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia, Volume 1, The Rise of the Priestly Warrior Kings, and increase your knowledge about the history, politics, and culture of Ethiopia in 1892, and how it connects to the rest of African and world history at the time. Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia, Volume 1 is available for purchase at www.bookmanexpress.pub. Please visit for more information. All right, so I, I, I want to go into um, Empress Menon um, and what she said in this interview. This is from Empress Menon and the media. Um, and this is taken from Empress Menon Chronicles. Uh, and it says queen of kings this is part of her titles um and let me just read this excerpt it says empress menin was very savvy when dealing with the media whereas her daughter tishai was very humble when asked about women's rights in ethiopia empress menin when asked the same question used her words as a machete dispelling any semblance of ideas that ethiopia's women were oppressed and hence in need of Western help. I feel confident that she knew that the Western media serves and serves only the interests of the Western states. European states were seeking a pretext to justify their invasion of a fiercely independent African nation. After all, the Western world does not believe in women's rights. The greatest evidence of this is that they consistently oppress their own mothers, daughters, sisters and wives. Empress Menon sent the Western media home with a new found respect for her and with no salacious story of oppressed Ethiopian women. Below is an excerpt of an interview of Empress of the Empress given to Jane Orth in 1935. Uh, when I asked rather indifferently if any of the women of her nation were modern, Empress Menon replied with great assurance, all of them. We have always been modern. The first glory of our empire, as you know, is not a man, but a woman, the Queen of Sheba. In many of our great historical crises, it is women who came to the rescue. They go to war, rule, inherit property, and manage estates. But are they not dominated by men, I ask? So you see the reporter where she had tried to pull off right or something. Oh no, Her Majesty objected. We are not Oriental. Huh? How many women have you seen in the market wearing veils? Are any of us kept shut up in the house behind lattice windows? In the family, both husband and wife hold property and both earn money. It is the man who gives a dowry, not the woman. Do you know men here even wash their own clothes? How about divorce, I ask? And this is the part that I really wanted to focus on. I just read that part because we rarely hear from the Empress. And I know a lot of people, you know, maybe never know Empress when it was so fiery. Um, so um, I love that. So we're going we're gonna to talk to Dr. Apong, uh, Dr. Santu about that on the live Wednesday. So make sure you put that in your calendar. Um, Equal rights, the Empress answers promptly. All property is divided, and she's talking about divorce. Equal rights, the Empress answers properly, promptly. How about divorce, I ask. Equal rights, the Empress answers promptly. All property is divided into two parts, and the divorced wife receives a full share. 
Sometimes even a stool is sawed. Our proverbs say, the last millet seed shall be shared. Some women grow rich through multiple divorces. What is the lot of your unmarried women? I inquired. There are no such women in my country, the empress asserted. They are all married and have homes. Does your majesty think Ethiopian women should be taught Western ways? I asked her. What are Western ways? She asked in turn with a trace of reproach in her voice. Before I could answer, she went on. Do you mean smoking, ro rouging, and wearing too few clothes? No, I protested. I mean education, social service, and participating in public life. We have girls schools, the Empress answered. Our women go to war by the thousands. There are many women working in the market as men. They serve at the front as nurses. They spin, weave, take long caravan trips and help their husbands carry loads and chopping wood. They are utterly fearless. They hold their own everywhere. So uh, that just show you how the Empress thought and what you know I thought was interesting is that she's saying all of the women in Ethiopia are married. What does she mean by this? Um, she's how I interpret this and put your, your comments down uh, and this is taking what she's saying at face value we know there's translation all of these things is that the norm she's talking about the rule because she's a ruler um, is that it, the, the expectation is that women are married and remember that you have Christian Muslims so they had polygamy in Ethiopia that was accepted by the crown the Islamic um, had up to four wives that was part of the, the empire but the expectation overall is that women are to be married so from a female from the Empress perspective and you hear even when she's talking about the liberation of women and they do everything she's talking about them in relation to their husbands so um they are bringing things to the table and most rastafari family let's be honest that's the reality there are very few uh completely stay-at-home situations within rastafari both um the brethren and the sister are working and that's how it should be toward the the, the common interest and so that's really how I and I cite the fullness, you know what I mean? In terms of what we should be aspiring to in the Rastafari community is the norm, um, the rule is that ones are married and we have to create our own um, certification of marriage, you know, ceremony. Uh, we do have the Orthodox Church for those ones who want to take that, but I'm not going to say everyone have to become Orthodox because Eilis Selassie is the king of kings and one of the things I realized is not everyone comes through Eilis Selassie through uh, orthodox Christian lens, you know. Um, everyone have their own journey to the emperor. The only thing that I ask is that ones are not disrespectful to the teaching of his majesty by being disrespectful to the legacy of Yeshua and all of these teaching that his majesty amplify within his own teaching so I, I just think that's contradictory don't make no sense um, but that doesn't mean that that has to be a one's pathway you know um, every knee shall bow every tongue confess you have one who come to his mind see through nature through different things you know what I mean every man have to know his journey um, but it's very interesting that we as a community have his majesty as the supreme and are not really um, studying and examining the pathway in terms of his liberty and marriage was part of that so crucial yeah well i live like say the first of the almighty and this is the charles march quasi we we'll tell them we are rebuilding the black kingdom. That means the black family. Listen, this is King Talk, wedding ring talk. King me, queen, on the higher we walk. Land get bought, house get bought. Children benefit from the battles we fought. This is King Talk, this is no fling talk. King me, queen, in a Zion we walk. Investment talk, you get talk. Children benefit from 
the battles we fought Every king have to get a queen Once you know your purpose, got to build your team Got to have a plan to fulfill your dream And then you got to be a man, you got to work like a machine Let her see the girl when she step on the scene She say work, 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 she will cook, she will bring She a don't be a man with self-esteem And if you can't be chill out like a trampoline And you feel like she made the whole world better Kill her kings and them queen crown together this I'm the girlfriend talk, we a real trendsetter Microphone, I'm a dress up, we then pleasure This is King Talk, wedding ring talk King be queen, down the aisle they walk Land get bought, house get bought Children benefit from the battles we fought This is King Talk, this is no fame talk King be queen, in a Zion we walk When fit from the battles we fought Every day she exercise No surprise she's up before the blue skies Supervised the youth, she's kind and wise She take time, she strengthen on the family ties hey, She's not the type to be with lots of guys She the type to make sure your man get out That's why all of my people got to rise But that's what the prophets have That's why Babylon they try to fight They criticize But they never stop their lies They got the cops a lot of sons of mama lots of